Okay, uh, good morning once again. Uh, welcome. welcome. Good to see you all. Um, good to know that you, most of you are doing well. Um, okay, Aradhana, can I ask you to start us off with a word of prayer, please? Thank you, Father God, for this time, for this day, Lord, has we uh, has we sit in your presence, Lord. Lord, help to receive your revelation of your word, Lord. Lord, Lord, take control of all students, Lord. Uh, take control of internet, Lord. Lord, bless, bless the pastor as as uh, teach as he teach, Lord. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Aradhana. Okay. Um, let's just do a quick recap and uh, we'll continue with where we left off. Okay. So, uh, you know, we are, we are referring to the textbook, uh, Ministering uh, Healing and Deliverance. Um, for this course and uh one of the key things we looked at we started off by looking at some of the key points right um we missed out in the last class uh but in the first two sessions we refer we looked at a lot of key points we uh but one of the first things is supernatural healing is in the person of jesus christ and not in the process that is used right we saw a couple of uh, methods processes that people use to administer uh, healing uh, but it is not in the method or in the process, but it is in the person of Jesus Christ. That is the first key point, right? That's uh, let's we are establishing a, a firm foundation, and Jesus is that solid rock that we are building everything uh, on, right? And another key point is that every believer can do this, right? Every believer can do this. And uh, two two things that we uh, that we learned in the previous class is. Uh, Jesus did everything he did uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit and the sonship glory that was bestowed on him, right? And the same thing is made available to you and me, to every believer who believes in Jesus. Amen. So that's the second key point that every believer can do this. Every believer can move and minister in healing and in deliverance, right? And then we looked at a few biblical reasons why we must minister uh, in the supernatural healing and deliverance. Well, we saw eight biblical reasons, um, and I hope you are able to follow with me in your textbooks and whatnot. I'm just doing a quick recap. Um, the first one is miracles, healing, and deliverance reveal the reality and nature of God, right? The, it reveals the, it, the reality and nature of God. Miracles reveal God's greatness. Uh, miracles demonstrate God's compassion. Uh, miracles have a powerful effect on people, especially on those who do not believe. It gets their attention, right? So until then, the first four. So we looked at that word reveal. It simply means a revelation or an unveiling that happens, right? That's just another word used there. So there's an unveiling or a revelation of who this God is and his nature, his will, uh, his intentions, his thoughts, right? And who he is, his nature, basically everything, right? His goodness, his compassion. Uh, and the fifth point was the importance Jesus himself gave to miracles, right? And um, the kingdom comes with power, the kingdom of God, the king, a kingdom is basically two words put together, merged together, right? King and dominion, right? Every time a king comes, he does not come alone. He comes with his dominion and uh, healing and deliverance is part of his kingdom. And that's the kingdom of power, basically, right? And the seventh point is the gospel is to be preached with accompanying signs, the gospel is to be preached with signs and wonders, right? And finally, miracles encourage people to believe for more of the supernatural, right? It encourages us. It, it increases our faith level. It increases our hope, right? Um, so those were the eight biblical reasons why we must minister supernatural healing and deliverance. Um, and uh, and in, in the second session, we covered... Uh, just do a very quick recap of that as well. Um, 
Why are we not demonstrating more of God's power? Uh, that was another thing we looked at. So quickly, uh, first, one of the reasons why we are uh, not why we are not demonstrating more of God's power. And again, when we, when I say we, we're talking about the universal church. Right? One is because of the lack of knowledge, as we read in Isaiah 13 and uh, Hosea, and wrong teaching concerning the supernatural. It's believing that uh, you know miracles, signs, and wonders don't happen anymore. It ended uh, when, when the last apostle passed away, died. Um, so teachings like that uh, hinder us from pursuing the supernatural. Uh, and the third point was leaving the miracle ministry reserved only for few. Okay, that is, uh, okay, and like a, like one of the key points that we mentioned uh, is that this ministry of healing and deliverance is for every believer. And, and for some reason, we've uh, raised to believe that, okay, the Ministry of Healing and Deliverance is only um, for a certain elite um, who, who only do theological degrees or whatnot, you know, uh, a lot of prefixes to their names. That's, that's a misconception, but uh, that is not correct. And the fourth point is replacing the supernatural with modern substitutes. Basically, that's becoming complacent or comfortable with uh, where we are at and not hungering uh, enough and not being desperate enough for the more of God to move in our midst, right? Um, so those... Uh, and then, I mean, we, we, we finished the entire chapter uh, of uh, entire first chapter of laying the foundations of what it is all about uh, ministering uh, in healing and deliverance. Right. Um, I hope you guys are all OK until this point. Um, and now, so we're going to start off with chapter two today. Uh, let me just uh, let me try and share the screen for us so we can. Uh, follow along together. Okay. I, are you able to see the screen or is it small for some reason? It's okay. It's visible. It's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's see. Okay. Cool. So uh, we're in the second chapter uh, that talks about God's word on healing. Okay. Uh, we. Uh, this is just. Uh, another form, another layer of foundation, uh, so to say, uh, into what we are learning about ministering healing and deliverance. Okay, so we're just going, making the foundations more stronger and stronger. And I would say um, the first point that this chapter addresses, the first thing uh, is pretty key, which is the source of sickness, disease, and ailments. Right, the source of sickness, disease, and ailments uh, what is the source uh, you know where does it come from does it come from God uh, you know and so that's what we're going to try and address today okay um, so it starts off by saying uh, God created the world perfectly like there was no flaw there was uh, no mistake talk about being a perfect world. Like, I don't know the proper definition or how to describe it, but then everything he made was absolutely flawless. Like nothing needed correction. Uh, you know, from the, from, the, from the place where everything was set, from the place where the moon was kept or the sun was, you know, the distance between that and the design of the creation and how you and I were made, everything was perfect until man disobeyed God, right? And the consequence uh, of the disobedience uh, is when the sin came. And with that, 
everything else with sickness and disease and demonic oppression of all kinds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Um, so, if can any can someone uh, read Romans chapter five verse twelve, please? It's a very familiar passage. Uh, we would know that, but uh, Romans chapter five verse twelve. Somebody. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. When Adam's sin, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. Thanks, uh, Jafina. Can you read that one more time, please? Yes. When Adam sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death, so death spread to everyone for everyone's sin. Thank you, Jafina. Uh, what translation is that, if I may ask? New Living Translation. NLT. Okay. All right. Not as much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to, just for us to read it in two more other translations. Uh, if any of us can read it in NKJV uh, and also NIV, which, which I have one, just two more translations if I. Romans 5 12. Um, I'm reading from NKJV. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus Death spread to all men because all sinned. Right, okay. Thanks, John. Um, anybody else? Is there another translation? Please. Right, uh, if, uh, it's, it's, it's fine with another language as well. I don't mind if anybody, some of us can read it in any language. Uh, good news translation. Okay. Sin came into the world through one man, and his sin brought death with it. As a result, death has spread to the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Right. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's quite powerful that scripture in kind of uh, telling us the impact or the consequences of sin, right? Um, when Adam sinned, every person after him didn't really have to sin, right? They were born with sin, right? Um, uh, we, I mean, including all of us, isn't it? Um, my three-year-old son, who does not, who has not attended a, a seminar or a workshop in lying, <laughs> will have. Uh, an entire cookie and when you ask him did you who gave that to you and did you eat it very conveniently and easily without any hesitation will say no i didn't eat it while still the cookie crumbs can be seen on his face um, <laughs> i hope that kind of you know it's quite serious isn't it um the the inheritance of sin so to speak right uh so when one man sinned, everything was impacted, including creation, including creation. Okay, um, so let's just continue with where we left. So we face the, the book says we face sickness, disease, and ailments because of one or more of the following reasons. So and here are a few reasons uh, you know, that's put together. First thing is man's disobedience man's disobedience a natural process of decay and corruption set in since the fall a natural process of decay and corruption corruption is just another word for death right decay and everything uh set in since the fall okay um so here it says because of the fall all of creation was subject to a process of decay and corruption uh, corruption subject means what all of creation was a slave. That's another term, right? All of creation was a slave to the process of decay and corruption. That means uh, Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says the wages of sin is death, isn't it? Um, so these are all the consequences. The process of all of that of fall was decay and corruption. Due to this process of corruption and decay, we have many other conditions such as birth deformities and defects and so on, etc., etc. Right? And all of it, because of the fall, because of man's disobedience, right? Um, uh, can someone read uh, this scripture, please? Romans 5, verse 12. 
uh, I can read it, but then I just want us to get a little involved. Um, can someone read the scriptures that's mentioned in Romans 8? Yeah, go ahead. Anyone, yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 19 to 23. For the honest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the okay. creation. So let's let's take it verse by verse. Is that okay, Jeffina? I'm sorry to have interrupted you there yes. or the flow. Okay. Yes. So for the earnest expectation, that means all of creation is is in is, is in the mode of expectation, right? And they are eagerly waiting for the revealing. Okay, revelation. They're revealing for the sons of God. Go ahead. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Okay. Right. So the all of creation is also waiting to be liberated. Uh, from the corruption of this DKM process. Can you imagine that? Like the all of creation is still waiting, right? Okay, go on, go on. It's interesting. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Okay, thank you. Right, so this is that last verse one more time. It says, not only that, but not only that, meaning uh, it's not, not only the, is, that, is the creation waiting to be liberated from the bondage of this corruption that it is enduring. Uh, it's not only that, you know, the whole creation is groaning and, labor, and labors with birth pangs. It's not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our body um right can someone quickly just go to um read another passage of scripture that's from first corinthians chapter 15 please first corinthians chapter 15 verse 53 and 54 first corinthians chapter 15 verse 53 and 54 anyone for the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality when the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality then the saying that is written will come true death has been swallowed up in victory you want let's read verse 55 as well as a conclusion where death, where or death is your victory where or death is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. Thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. All right. So, uh, just just another cross-referencing verse that talks about, uh, you know, as this last verse says, we are all waiting for, uh, you know, to uh, to be adopted and and then for the redemption of our body. It simply means this corruption, this corrupt body, will put on incorruption. This mortal body will put on immortality uh right um so that's the first thing that's the first point there okay so the uh the first point is all about man's disobedience and how fall entered the world and you know just destroyed everything for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god right that's what it's all about sin is that's the simplest definition of sin is that it's just missing the mark right we have all sinned. We have all strayed away from the original plan, from what God had, from the original design, and we have fallen short. Right? Um, there's a mark that was set, but we have fallen short. That um, that's what it's all about. Okay. And the second thing uh, is Satan's activity and direct involvement of demonic spirit. Okay. So remember, we are in this chapter talking about the source of sickness disease and ailments, right? And we started off with talking about the fall and how we are all eagerly waiting uh, to be redeemed uh, by in our bodies and whatnot. And the second thing is Satan's activity and direct involvement of demonic spirits. Right? Um, Acts, 10, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible is very clear. It says, 
God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Okay. And now the, with the sin and the fall gave, gave license to the devil to come and do what he wants to do. Right. And John chapter 10 verse 10 says he comes to steal, kill and destroy. Right. Uh, he comes to steal, kill and destroy. And he, he wants to erase uh, us as if we never existed. He does not just hate us in the simplest term, but he absolutely, uh, you know, we, we, we make him angry, right? Uh, he's infuriated with us. He, um, there's nothing about us that he likes, right? So he wants to just destroy us. He wants to destroy our families, uh, uh, Everything, everything, everything about us just infuriates him. Uh, and so, and this is how he takes it on us, right? And the sin gave him the license to come and do what he wants to do, right? So while we know that all, not all sickness are due to the demonic spirits, and we'll, we'll address that point in the next, we'll address this thing in the next point, okay? While we know that not all sickness are due to demonic spirits, Typically, the following would be recognized as due to demonic work and doesn't end with this list, but uh, such as incurable diseases or birth defect, deformities, uh, etc. and etc. Okay, so all of these are, and we will learn more about this in the chapters to come. Okay, guys, one of the things that I want to assure you is that as we progress uh, during this course, uh, every frequently asked question right, that you might have ever had is addressed in this book and uh, it's pretty amazing okay so uh as we progress just you know just hold on uh i'm sure all of your questions will be answered as we as we cover chapter by chapter okay um so that's the second point and the third one is natural causes natural causes okay so the second one was about uh, how you know how the devil devils uh, you know how he uh uh he strikes us with sickness and 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 oppresses us, uh, and then there was this point that says not we, we know that not all sickness are due to demonic spirits, and then we come to this natural causes, um, and it says a person's physical problems could be because of other natural causes, very important. Please note, such as neglect, a lack of proper care of the body or mind. Improper diet, someone said amen. <laughs> uh, use of substances such as alcohol, drugs, smoking, or due to accidents, uh, right? And so, so all of that, sometimes we choose uh, that for ourselves, right? What happens when we keep smoking? We all know the whole world knows smoking is injurious to health and uh, we choose to do that and then we can't put the blame on the devil, right? We choose to take alcohol and drugs and whatnot and then one of our organs fail, uh, you know, the tendency is that, okay, hey, you know, it's because of that bad guy, you know? So we, uh, you know, there are consequences that we face when we choose to, uh, you know, just not take care of our body and our mind. And those are the, nat those, those come under the na uh, natural causes. So these are the three main things, right? Man's disobedience, Satan's direct activity and natural causes, right? So coming back to that uh, classic million dollar question, does God send sickness? But remember, we are talking about the source, right? So having understood the source of sickness and disease, okay, guys, I want you to just reflect. Having understood the sick, source of sickness and disease, the response to the question, does God send sickness, is an emphatic no, right? God is not the author of sickness and disease, Right? God did not create sickness or introduce it, it into the world. Right? Uh, imagine that. If he wanted to do it, he, I'm sure Genesis 1 and Genesis verse 2 would speak about it. At least somewhere in the first chapter of Genesis. 
yeah, God, you know, uh, <laughs> it doesn't, isn't it? Because he, he is the source of life and everything that he does is good, isn't it? So um, does God send sickness? Simple answer, emphatic answer is no. Now, just think about it. Ministering to someone, every time you pray, every time you say that, I'll pray for you, and we end that prayer in the name of Jesus, right? We know that the source of that sickness is not from him. It could be anything else but God. Okay, this has to, you need to absorb this and just, uh, you know, that, that this, this truth has to be rock solid in you, that the source of sickness and disease is not of God. Okay? Um, are you guys okay until now? Yes. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, we've understood we've understood the source of sickness, uh, and we've learned that okay, source of sickness is not from God. He does not send sickness and whatnot. But uh, just to address a few questions, uh, what about understanding difficult passages? Right, uh, there are difficult passages in the scriptures when we when we where we come across and say, okay, why God uh, did God really do this, uh, etc. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at. Right, um, so God's will, God's word, and God's deeds will always be consistent with His nature. Okay, you need to underline it, highlight it, do whatever you want. It's super important. God's will, his word, and his deeds, God's deeds or his acts or his actions, what he does, right, will always be consistent with his nature. And his nature, as we've already studied, he is Jehovah Rapha. That's his covenant name, isn't it? God who heals. Okay, um, so having said all of that, uh, and we're going to go through a, a multiple scriptures, okay, that kind of challenges us or, or difficult uh, for us to understand. It says, God is light and there is no darkness in him. Right? That's what First John 1, 5, James 1, 17 say. Right? God is light. And there is no darkness in him. And even in John chapter 1, he says that he is the light of the world, right? Then what does the scriptures mean when it states, he bowed the heavens also and came down with darkness under his feet. He made darkness his secret place. His canopy around him was dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Psalm, Psalm 18 was 9, 11. Why would God engage darkness here? You know, that's another challenging scripture that's used, right? Uh, and more to come. God is truth and he cannot lie. And then yet we see that then... Uh, then what do the scriptures mean by lying spirits came from God in those passages that you see? And then we see God is peace and he is not the author of confusion, right? God is peace. He is not the author. That means he is not the source of confusion. And so what do the scriptures mean when God says, I will cause confusion. I will strike them with confusion. God sent a spirit of ill will. <clears throat> uh, the distressing spirit from God came upon Saul, etc., etc. Right? And God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, and hence he has no sickness and neither is he the author of any sickness. Then what do the scriptures mean when God says, who has, man, who, uh, who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? or I will put these diseases on, okay? And then more, uh, how do we understand which incidents, uh, in the, uh, such incidents in the New Testament as Zechariah being struck dumb for a season uh, and Ananias, the death of Ananias and Sapphira, they were struck dead in the church because they were lying to the pastor, right? Uh, Saul being blinded for three days. Uh, these are all the challenging passages, right, that can, make us think otherwise or qu question us okay what's going on here lord uh, what is it right 
uh, remember one of the things I, so I mentioned in the last class is that it's okay to have questions and I think it is important to ask questions, but just that please know the difference between uh, asking a question and questioning, uh, right? The, it, it, the source of that is from the heart, right? The intentions, the motives behind the questions, right? So it, it's okay. And um, I'm sure it's not just me who've had these questions. Like, I'm a little confused here, Lord, help me, help me out, right? But, um, and the notes, the book puts, put, puts it in, in a beautifully, <clears throat> right? Um, God's best, God's absolute best is revealed to us in Jesus, right? His best is revealed, revelation, unveiling is revealed to us in Jesus. What does that mean? Who God is, is perfectly revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ, okay? Remember, one of the key points, the first key point of this course is uh, it's not in the process or the methods, but it is about the person. It is in the person, right? And so God, who God is, his, uh, is perfectly revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the word embodied, right? The word who became flesh, right? The word became, that means it was an action. It, it became something. Right, it just didn't stay stagnant. The word became there was a verb involved there. It became flesh. Right, that means you could it manifested itself. Right, um, Bill Johnson says that Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Right, Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Okay, um, can um, so can, can I have someone just read the remaining passage of this scripture, please? Uh, sorry, of this, uh, of this paragraph, please. Our understanding about God must be perfectly aligned to who Jesus is, what he said and what he did. Since this is perfection, even the difficult passage in the rest of the scripture must be interpreted in the light of the person of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Let's go on. Go on. What is obscure must be interpreted in the light of what is obvious. That is seen so clearly in the person of Christ. One thing is clear that during his earthly ministry, Jesus healed all who came to him in faith. For all who came to him in faith, he healed every one of them from every kind of sickness and disease and delivered people from all demonic works. This is the perfect standard. Thank you, John. Um, right? Um, so Jesus is the standard. He is he's the benchmark um, right, for all of us. Uh, Pastor Ashish, in one of the weekend schools that we have, uh, we have weekend school of ministry that happens, that used to happen at least. Uh, in this question, um, came up and uh, you know with, when we were discussing about this difficult passages and he says um, and actually made a note he says if you don't understand difficult passages but understand Jesus then you've got it right right if you don't understand difficult passages but then if you understand Jesus what he did what he said uh, you know and how he lived then you've got that right because he is the perfect theology. And right? if, if there is any other theology out there, this the study of God, right? That is not in line with the person of Jesus Christ, then the theology is wrong. God is not wrong. Right? So that was um, like a, a good revelation, at least, uh, you know, um, to me. So, um, and, and this is a few scriptures that I want us to read, uh, you know, about. I said, uh, you able to see the notes. Uh, we are based 39, that's what we are discussing. 38. Thank you, Dr. Okay, you're welcome. Hey, uh, 
and I'm, I'm, I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures for us, um, you know, that talks about uh, everything what Jesus did. So just bear with me. And if you want to make a note of it, please make a note of it. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 says, When evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were ill. Uh, Matthew chapter 12 Verse 15, Matthew 12, 15 says, But Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 14, 14, When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. Matthew 14, 36, And they implored him that they might just touch the fringe of his cloak. And as many as touched it were cured. And Matthew 15, 30. And large crowds came to him, bringing with them those who were lame, crippled, blind, mute, and many others. And they laid them down at his feet, and he healed them. That is Matthew 15, verse 30. Okay, uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Luke 4, 40. While the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him and laying his hands on each one of them he was healing them you guys want more just a couple more i hope you're not tired <laughs> luke 5 17 it says one day he was teaching and there were some pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of galilee and judea and from jerusalem and the power of the lord was present for him to perform healing last one right luke 9 11. but the crowds were aware of this and followed him and welcoming them he began speaking to them about the kingdom of god and curing those who had need of healing Amen. That's uh, that's just the gist um, of everything what Jesus did, and it's not even everything. It's just a few scriptures, and there's so much more of what uh, of what he did, right? So uh, the point here is God's best is revealed to us in Jesus. Everything that uh, you know, in this is in context with the, the previous passages, is of understanding difficult passages of scriptures, right? Um, so God's best is revealed to us in Jesus because he is perfect theology, right? And the second point is God permitted the consequences of sin and the works of Satan to continue on earth as for a time, okay? God has permitted consequences of sin. That's the consequence of sin. That is the consequence of, of, of the fall that uh, we have to live with, okay? Can someone read Psalm 115 verse 16, please? Psalm 115, verse 16, and Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Psalms uh, 115, verse six, uh, 16. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of mm -hmm. men. Thank you, Zalantoni. And can someone read Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, please? Luke chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I will give you all this power and all this wealth. The devil told him, it has all been handed over to me and I can give it to anyone I choose. All, right, all this you. will be yours. Go ahead, sorry. If you worship me. Right, all this will be yours if you worship me. Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, right, so we, we see from the uh, scriptures that uh, the heavens, the psalmist says the heavens belong to him and the earth was given to us. Right, One of the first commandments uh, that was given to Adam was God told him that he gave dominion uh, to Adam over the earth. Right? He says, okay, you have dominion over this uh over this planet, over, over, over Earth, right? It was given to us, right? So God permitted the consequences of sin and the works of Satan to continue on Earth for a time being, 
right? And the example used here is the example between the landlord and the tenant, right? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure some of us uh, have lived in a rented house. I'm living in a rented house and I'm not the owner of this house. Um, how I keep my home or house, uh, you know, I'm not going to blame my owner or the landlord for everything that's happened that happens here, right? If my if this room is clean, I'm not going to call my owner and say, uh, "Why is my room clean? What do you think he's going to do?" <laughs> right? Um, and yes, you know. Things like that, everything that happens uh, in this house, the landlord is not responsible for everything. Our actions are. And then there are times we understand and realize there are certain things that needs to be fixed, okay, that only the landlord can. And we go to the landlord and says like, hey, uh, you know, this has happened, this pipe is broken, uh, this needs to be fixed, and you know, you are the owner. And, and, and spiritually translating that is what we call prayer right we invite and that's what jesus taught us to pray isn't it? Uh, let your kingdom come let your will be done right god's will his word his acts everything is revealed in his nature right so when let your kingdom come let your will be done right and as i mentioned earlier when king comes he comes with his dominion right in his dominion there is no darkness right um so he comes and uh, he comes and moves. He he intervenes, right? And, and by answering our prayer. And then there was something spectacular that happened: was that even without prayer, the story of redemption took place, right? That that was his huge plan, like the master plan from the beginning. Okay, you know we. Uh, in our disobedience, sin came. We fall. We fell from God's grace, uh, but God just didn't let us, uh, you know, go um, and die by ourselves. He did not let us be orphans. He orchestrated a glorious salvation plan, and that and that is the story of redemption of Jesus, uh, you know, coming to earth. Um, and that's why we say that Jesus is is the perfect theology. The will of the Father is revealed to us uh, through Jesus, right? Uh, very quickly, uh, a couple of points before we close this session. Um, many suffer simply because of their own sinful or careless actions, okay? Uh, once again, talking about consequences uh, for our action, okay? It's like one of those laws of physics, you know, so every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, there has to be. It's it's like a law, right? Um, we cannot attribute everything that goes on in our lives the way we take care of ourselves, uh, you know, and blame it on God. It's very easy for us to do that, right? It's very convenient for us to do that, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's so so many lead, so many things can lead to us not living a healthy life, and one of that could be bitterness. Right. Okay, someone did something to us and you hold on to that, you become bitter and over the age, the days go by, the months go by, you become a person that you're not uh, able to recognize yourself because of the bitterness that you harbor in your heart against another individual or whatnot, whatever, and then your health is being ruined because of that, uh, right? Uh, that This is just one of the examples and how we, you know, with our, and, and that's considered sin, isn't it? Um, you know, by by being careless uh, in our own sinful ways. And the fourth point says that in the exercise of divine judgment, right, in the exercise of divine judgment, every time when God wants to correct something, uh, you know, or bring to people's attention of what they are doing is wrong, uh, for a period of time, he withdraws his protection over an individual. And this is where we understand certain scriptures when, when we read in, in the Old Testament, it, we time and, and read that he handed them over to the Philistines. He handed them over to the Philistines, right? 
it's not like god took them and in their in his hands gave them philistines no it simply means that he withdrew his protection from them from the israelites for a period of time why because of their sinful ways right consequences um that's the first thing and secondly he engages the elements of this world to get our attention right he engages the elements of this world to get our attention and that kind of tells the story of uh what happened with paul right on the road to damascus he simply god using one of the elements of this world blindness strikes him and then questions him is like why do you persecute me so right um and then he got his attention and it's all for a period of time where god exercise chooses to exercise divine judgment okay um so let's do a quick summary uh of everything that we've covered so far um okay i'm going to uh request some of us just to read this uh hey sid uh, can you go ahead and read this first para please first time not feeling well at all now okay <laughs> all right uh isaac or zelitoli anyone can just yeah anyone Nine. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, please. The demonic works are man's action. God cannot give or bless people with something he does not have. Since we have that, there is no disease and demonic powers in heaven. When sickness or evil spirits are stated as coming from God or being sent by God, we must understand this in the light of number 2 and number 3 above okay that's just God talking has, about the two and third points above yeah go ahead I, sorry yeah god has permitted this fear on on the earth for a period however jesus came to be the complete remedy for the fall and for sin and this becomes the basis for us as believers to overcome what the devil may normally do to people on earth okay thank you thank you isaac right jesus christ came to be the complete remedy for the fall and for sin Right? and this becomes the basis guys um once again highlight that this becomes the basis for us as believers to overcome what the devil may normally do to people on earth right um let's go on let's uh, finish this and somebody else read the second para please divine judgments when there is outright sin and no repentance even after repeated warning God removes his hand of protection that would have normally preserved people in such cases <coughs> in such cases God permits or engages natural elements to get people's attention Moses causing the plagues in Egypt Saul being blind for a few days Herod struck with worms Elimas being blinded for a season in Acts 13 are some examples however repentance brings people out from a place of judgment and into God's mercy mercy always triumphs over judgment James chapter 2 verse 13 thank you Rosalyn okay and just in conclusion the last point here it says times of a uh, great glory uh, can someone read that please and we'll end Right. Okay. It's, it simply says, further, what we see in 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 that in times or seasons when God's glory being manifested is great, there is lower tolerance for sin, right? Including unbelief. In times of great visitation, there is greater glory, greater grace, but lower tolerance of sin. Very important. Ananias and Sapphira, 
were in the Jerusalem church where the glory of God was great. Okay, there was a revival that was happening uh, in that church, in that region. Every There were a lot of people who were giving um, and church was, like, like I said, you know, there was a revival that was happening, right, in, the, in that area. Uh, uh, and so there was greater glory. And as mentioned, with greater glory comes lower tolerance of sin. And sim- what just happened there was Ananias and Sapphira lied to the people, to the leadership of the church and everything. So there was no tolerance, right? Um, and there was low tolerance for sin. Their sin of lying to the Holy Spirit. And uh, Zechariah encountered God's angel Gabriel, but was unbelieving and was struck dumb for a season because you did not believe my words, it says in Luke one twenty, right? So that's the summary of this section that we've uh, learned so far. And the conclusion, this whole thing uh, is, guys, and I want to drive this home, is God is not the author of sickness and disease. This is not his intent or design for people. Right? God's will his word and his deeds will always be consistent with his nature. Okay. Um, I will stop presenting and stop recording for now. And we'll resume uh, after the break in the next session. All right. See you guys in 10 minutes.